Welcome to the channel if you haven't seen any of my videos before and welcome back if you have. So today we're going to tackle a project that is long overdue, is something that I've needed to do since I bought my C5 Corvette and chances are if you're watching this you need to do it too. So rather than spending $1700 or so, we're going to tackle this ourselves and we're going to do it cheap. So if you have this problem, stay tuned. Let's fix it together. It's gonna take a little while, but it's gonna be worth it. Let's go. So once you pop the hood, we are looking for something called the EBCM. So you're gonna see this coolant line here right underneath it you'll see these metal lines going out from there those are individual brake lines connected to that in the um, closer to the middle of the engine is a piece that we're going to take out and uh, it's got six bolts holding it on and i believe it's a t20 torx so let me grab that and let's have at it for some better access here i'm going to go ahead and remove this piece um, so that I can get my hand up under there a little bit better. All right, so I just finished taking out all six screws from that EBCM module. And I'm not gonna lie, that sucked. <laughs> the top two, were, they're, they're accessible. Uh, there's things in the way, but you just gotta figure out the right length of extensions if you're using a ratchet or if you're using a screwdriver, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, the bottom ones, you can't see, but you can feel around there and, and you get them, they're okay. There's just not a lot of room, so it's just a lot of ratchet cranking, a very small movement. Uh, the center ones, though, are sunken in, and I'll show this better once I pull the module actually out of here, and I'll show you, but my ratchet wouldn't fit in there um, it was just too small of a, a gap to slide the head of the uh, T20 uh, head that I was using. So I went in my tool chest, found another one. Same thing, it just, it was a little bit too big, too snug to fit in there. So luckily I had a screwdriver, a hex 20 screwdriver, and I got that in there just fine, but the hard part was just that initial break because I mean it's never been taken out it's torqued down whatever but getting those two middle ones out was less than desirable but we're saving seventeen hundred dollars here I would say that was worth more like three dollars five dollars so five dollars to me to take those bolts out uh, or those screws out to you might be worth more, might be worth less, but it is accessible. You can do this yourself and we are doing it people. So let's get in there, pop this baby out and let's have some fun soldering. Of course, somebody raided my tools and my rubber mallet is not where it usually is. Oh yeah, there's some silicone or something holding that on so a few little taps with the with the hammer and here we go and there's a clip on the bottom so we're gonna have to to reach down there and take that clip off. <sighs> I 
and it's out. So we just had to take off this bottom clip. There's also another one that, that plugs right in here that is really easy to tell <laughs> where uh, or what to do with that one. Flip that up, big plug comes right out, nice and easy. This smaller one just has a little tiny tab there and it's not focusing. Come on camera. I'll show you better on the inside. So this connects to all of the inputs for the, uh, the brake lines. What we're gonna have to do is take these off and pry this thing open, which doesn't seem like it's fun or easy to do. But again, we're saving 1700 bucks, so come on, let's do it. We have the ECBM module. Uh, there are actually four additional screws that you need to take out. These four here, and this is a T15 that you use to take those out. So we used the T20 to take the original six bolts out to get it off the car. T15 on these four that are holding on the cover. There's definitely a seal that you can see, like a rubber seal. I don't know if it's a gasket that was made for it or just a, some, some type of adhesive that they put in there when they put it together originally. Um, that's gonna be the hard part to, to pry that off without damaging this too much um, but it has to be done so we're going to take that apart and uh, all that we really need to do is solder some different points when once we get in there slap it back together throw it in the car and we shouldn't have any more issues with our traction control abs all those those different sensors going off so uh, I told you I was going to show you these bolts here. This is how it mounts into the car. You've got the two bolts up top, two on the bottom, and the ones in the middle. So the, the Torx bit that I have, I mean it's not that big. It's a normal Torx bit for a ratchet. And, and this is, mind you, a, a, a tiny ratchet. So it's not a half inch, it's a, a quarter inch ratchet. Uh, and it, it won't fit down in the side here. So you can see it just, it won't go down far enough. So I ended up having to use the, the T20 screwdriver to get down there. The hard, that was the hardest part was just getting that initial break um, with that screwdriver. So one of the sides I was able to get my hands in there enough to, to really be able to twist it. The other one, there was no room. I was really just finger tipping the, the end of it and I, I didn't have enough strength in my fingers to do that. What I did was I ended up taking the Torx 20 screwdriver placing it in where I needed it to go, right down in here. And then I took a, uh, a vice grip, put it on the end, and used that to pry and get that initial crank. And where it was a little bit of a challenge to fit it in there, uh, just to get that, that one twist, I was able to do it and, and get that last one out. So putting them back in shouldn't be as hard, but I finally got this thing open and I wanna show you exactly how I did it because this will save you time. This will save you effort and you won't break stuff too. So if you look on the very back, there's a hole that is filled in with silicone, RTV, what have you, both. Um, but there's, there's nothing in that hole other than that. And so reading on some forums, I found this trick. If you drill and tap a hole here, 
for a bolt, you can just simply use that to slowly ratchet all the way through and it will slowly start to separate. And you can use screwdrivers. Actually, what I did is I used a, a razor blade to keep cutting as it would open up just slightly um, to get rid of more of that adhesive because you've actually got a black RTV that goes all the way around and then on the inside you have a crap ton of silicone. Uh, I went to Home Depot, Lowe's actually, I went to Lowe's and I bought an Irwin bit that uh, is a number seven uh, quarter inch um, hole that will be drilled and it, it bored out the hole just slightly from what it already was and then the the tapping thread tapper um, you wind in there and it has 20 threads uh, for a, a quarter inch 20 thread uh, bolt so once I was done tapping that, and that was actually really easy because this is such soft metal, and uh, I slowly started ratcheting this in, and immediately it started pulling. And so as I started cutting more of that adhesive away, I could also use a screwdriver to, to start prying a little bit. And then I'd, I'd go more and more and more with the ratchet, and to the point where it just kind of popped and it's I had to actually back this bolt out in order to get the full thing out of here but it's snug as you can see if you look at the inside up close here there's a good half inch of silicone there half inch all the way around of silicone now using that hole, I think is probably exactly how it was designed to, to get this out. And it might be exactly what's used by um, the individuals that you can send these ABS systems to and have them refurbished. Because it has like a spot to be able to go through here. So there it is. It actually goes right past there's a specific cutout for that hole in the in the motherboard there and uh, so you can get all the way down and and push that out so in my opinion that's how it was designed to to be taken out rather than prying and breaking so this is what the board looks like that we're going to be working on but if you can see it looks like almost like water has been in here or something. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that off with uh, a Q-tip and some 91% alcohol. Because it dries quickly. And that actually looks much, much better. Pretty dirty. That's what came off of it. So just to show you which areas we're going to re-solder here, there's, there's five different points. So there's this one here, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So it's this square right here that we're going to be working in. Those are typically the ones that go out um, with a bad solder or whatever it might be. Uh, this is not the first thing that I've had to pull apart and re-solder on my C5. So you know, makes sense.
So before I really seal this back up, I want to make sure that it works properly. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it and uh, make sure that it, it works just the way it's supposed to. And if it does, then we will go ahead and put some RTV in there and seal that thing back up. So I'm going to put in these four screws to make sure it held, is held in place properly. And then I'm going to see if we can get away with just uh, maybe putting the top two screws in. We'll see how that goes. Okay, moment of truth here. Remember, we just put in one bolt. The lights are off. Oh my goodness, it worked. All right, so this is what I picked up to be able to open up the ECBM very easily actually. So it's an Irwin quarter inch 20 NC comes with a drill bit that corresponds with the thread tap. And uh, so if you see down here, it 20 threads per inch. And so I got a corresponding quarter inch, 20 threads per inch by three inch long bolt. You definitely didn't need three inches. You could get away with two inches just fine. But I got that just in case. Um, and again, on the ECBM, if you just turn it over, there's a hole that I've filled back up with uh, RTV, but that hole is what I used to drill, tap, and screw that bolt in and was able to get that off. I have since gone ahead and put on new RTV and sealed it back up, made sure and I sealed around the edge again as well, just in case. It's been sitting for about 15 hours now. I think we're ready to put it back in and be done with this project. Okay. Putting the hood down. Moment of truth here. Will we get any error messages? Or will it be exactly the way it's supposed to be? No error message. Yes, 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 yes. Try to control off, on, off, on. Competitive driving. Awesome. So this button, active handling, that's what turns it off and on. If you hold it down, it takes a few seconds, but that's what turns on your competitive driving mode. And we're good, brothers and sisters. We just saved ourselves a lot of money. All right, everybody. So we just finished that process. No more warning lights. Active handling works properly. And now we're going to have to go and test it out. So. Before I go, I just wanted to let you know that if I can do this, you can do it. All we needed was a couple of easy tools that you probably have laying around the house. And I did have to buy some RTV, which was like three or four dollars. And I had to buy uh, that drill bit and, and thread tap set along with a bolt. And together those were maybe eight bucks. So you can see for <laughs> less than $15, I was able to get this fixed and the dealership literally wanted over $1,700 to fix this. Really? I guess that comes down to the fact that they're used to using new parts rather than trying to fix something. They just slap a new part in there 
even though it's a, you saw it's a pretty easy fix. Um, but they don't make the ECBM module anymore. So for that particular year, they'd have to buy a new one or buy a used one that's been rebuilt and people charge an astronomical amount for it. The other option, which does save quite a bit of money off of that, is still $150 and you can essentially exchange uh, one with another company or send it off and they'll uh, tear it open, solder those things together, send it back to you. So it's up to you, but if you're anything like me, I like to save a penny or two. 150 bucks is still 150 bucks to me and we were able to do it for less than $15. So if you liked this video, share it with anybody else that has a C5 because I mean, why would you watch this if you had any other type of car? That wouldn't really make any sense. So C5 owners, <laughs> you can do it. I've changed so many things on this C5 Corvette. I've had to fix so many problems with it and it's actually been easy to work on and fun and rewarding. So I haven't had to spend a fortune on sending it to the dealership. So with that, you can do it, get out there, attack these problems. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.